viewers, welcome to another exciting episode on Nebo TV. My name is Agbaji Onome. Today on Nebo TV, we're going to be talking about one of the Nigerians' head of state who ruled from 1966 to 1975 during the time of the deadly civil war in Nigeria, the person of Yakubu Gowon. So stay with us as we go briefly into his early life. Yakubu Gowon is from Lu, a small village in the present Kanke local government area of Plateau State. His parents, Nde Yohana and Matwok Konyang, left for Wusasa Zaria as church missionary society, missionaries in the early days of Gowon's life. Gowon was the fifth of 11 children. He grew up in Zaria and had his early life and education there. At school, Gowon proved to be a very good athlete. He was the school football goalkeeper, pole vaulter, and long distance runner. He broke the school mile record in his first year. He was also the boxing captain. Yakubu Gowon married Miss Victoria Sakari, a trained nurse, in 1969 at a ceremony officiated by Set Erosewe Kale at the Cathedral Church of Christ in Lagos State. Yakubu Gowon joined the Nigerian army in the year 1954 and received his commission as a second lieutenant on October 19, 1955 on his 21st birthday. Stay with us. Yakubu Gowon trained in the prestigious Royal Military Academy Standhurst, UK, 1955-1956, Staff College, Kimberley, UK in 1962, as well as the Joint Staff College, Latima, 1965. He advanced to battalion commander rank by 1966, at which time he was still a lieutenant colonel. In January 1966, he became Nigeria's youngest military chief of staff at the age of 31, because a military coup d'etat by a group of junior officers under Major Chukwemeka Kaduna Nzegu led to overthrow the Nigerian civilian government. In the course of this coup, mostly northern and western leaders were killed. The then Lieutenant Colonel Gowon returned from his course at the Joint Staff College Latima, UK, two days before the coup. A late arrival that possibly exempted him from the coupist hit list. All through his years from 1954 to 1966 in the Nigerian army, Gowon never participated in politics or had anything whatsoever to do with politics. But in 1966, he was chosen to become head of state in the Federation. Stay tuned. In 1966, Gowon was chosen to become head of state. Up to then, Gowon remained strictly a career soldier with no involvement whatsoever in politics. Until the tumultuous event of the year suddenly thrust him into a leadership role. When his unusual background as a Nortana, who was neither of Hausa nor Fulani ancestry nor of the Islamic faith, made him a particularly safe choice to lead a nation whose population were sitting with ethnic tension. In anticipation of Eastern secession, Gowon moved quickly to weaken the support base of the region by decreeing the creation of 12 new states. To replace the four regions. Six of these states contain minority groups that are demanded state creation since 1950s. Gowon rightly calculated that the eastern minorities would not actively support the Igbos, given the prospect of having their own state if the secession efforts were defeated. Many of the federal troops who fought in the Nigerian Civil War, also known as Biafran War, to bring the eastern region back to the Federation were members of the minority groups. The war lasted 30 months and ended in January 1970. In accepting Biafra's unconditional case fire, Gowon declared that there would be no victory and no vanquished. In this spirit, the years afterwards were declared to be a period of rehabilitation, reconstruction and reconciliation. Gowon announced May 5, 1967, the division of the Nigeria regions into 12 states. North Western State, North Eastern State, Kanu State, North Central State, Benue Plateau State, Kwara State, Western State, Lagos State, Midwestern State, and from Ojuku's Eastern Region, a River State, a Southeastern State, and an Eastern Central State. 
The end of the war came about 13th January 1970. Subsequently, Gowon gave his famous speech on no victory, no vanquish, and accompanied it with an amnesty for those who participated in the Biafran War, as well as a program of reconciliation, reconstruction, and rehabilitation to repair the extensive damage done to the economic and infrastructure of the eastern part of the country during the years of war. Stay tuned. The end of the war came about on 13th January 1970 with Colonial Olusegun Obasanjo's acceptance of the surrender of Biafra forces. The next day, Obasanjo announced the situation on the former rebel radio station, Radio Biafra Enugu. Gowon subsequently declared his famous No Victory, No Vanquished speech and followed it up with an amnesty for the majority of those who had participated in the Biafran uprising, as well as a program of reconciliation, reconstruction and rehabilitation to repair the extensive damage done to the economy and infrastructure of the eastern region during the years of war. Unfortunately, some of these efforts never left the drawing board. In addition to this, Gowon's administration policy of giving £20 to Biafra who had a bank account in Nigeria before the war, regardless of how much they had in their account, was criticized by foreign and local aid workers as this led to an unprecedented scale of begging, looting and robbery in the former Biafran areas after the war. The post-war years saw Nigeria enjoy a meteoric oil-filled economic upturn in which the cost of the scope of activities of the Nigerian federal government grew up to an unprecedented degree with an increase in oil revenue earnings. So stay with us. Unfortunately, however, this period also saw a rapid increase in corruption, mostly bribery of and by federal government officials, and although the head of state himself, Yakubu Gowon, was never found complicit in the corrupt practices, he was often accused of turning a blind eye to the activities of his staff and cronies. Another decision made by Gowon at the height of the oil boom was to have what some considered negative repercussions for the Nigeria economy in later years. Although its immediate effects were scarcely noticeable, his indigenization degree of 1972, which declared many sectors of Nigeria economy off limit to all foreign investment, while ruling out some minority participation by foreigners in several areas. This degree provided windfall gains to several well-connected Nigerias but proved highly detrimental to non-oil investment in the Nigeria economy. Furthermore, due to the growth in bureaucracy in the country, there were allegations of rise in corruption. The wealth of the country grew to the extent that a fake license was being imported and used in the country. There were stories of thorns of sand and stones being imported, as well as Yakubu Gowon himself talking to a reporter that the only problem Nigeria has is how to spend the money she has. So stay with us as we go briefly on this. The corruption in Gowon's administration culminated in the notorious cement Amada in the summer of 1975 when the port of Lagos became jammed with hundreds of ships trying to unload cement. Somehow, agents of Nigerian government had signed contracts with 68 different international suppliers for the delivery of a total of 20 million tons of cement in one year to Lagos, even though each port could only accept 1 million tons of cargo per year. Even worse, the poorly drafted cement contracts include demerage clauses highly favorable to the suppliers, meaning that the bill began to skyrocket if the ships sat in port waiting to unload. The Nigerian government did not fully grasp the magnitude of its mistake until the port of Lagos was so badly jammed that basic supplies could no longer get through. By the time it was too late, its attempt to repudiate the cement contracts and impose an emergency embargo on all inbound ships tied up the country in litigation around the world for many years, including a 1983 decision of the U.S. Supreme Court. Subsequently, in his later years, Yakubu traveled to the United Kingdom. There, he obtained a PhD degree in political science as a student in the University of Warwick. Stay with us. His main British residence is on the border of North London and Hertfordshire, where he has very much become part of the English community in his area. He served a term as church warden in his parish, St. Mary the Virgin, Monkel Hatlin. 
In February 1976, Kowon was implicated in a coup d'etat by Colonel Buka Suka Dimka, which resulted in the death of General Motala Mohammed. According to Dimka's confession, he met with Gowon in London and obtained support from him for the coup. In addition, Dimka mentioned before his execution that the purpose of the coup d'etat was to reinstall Gowon as head of state. As a result of the Cobb Tribunal findings, Gowon was declared wanted by the Nigerian government, stripped of his rank in Asemtia, and had his pension cut off. Gowon was finally pardoned along with the ex Biafran president, Emeka Ojuku, during the Second Republic under President Shewu Shagari. Gowon's rank of general wasn't restored until 1987, however, by General Ibrahim Babangida. Furthermore, Gowon is also involved in the Guinea Worm Eradication Program as well as the HIV Program with Global Fund of Geneva. Gowon founded his own organization in 1992 called Yakubu Gowon Center. The organization is said to work on issues in Nigeria such as good governance as well as infectious disease control including HIV AIDS, Guinea Worm and Malaria. In November 2004, Gowon won World Peace Prize Top Honor awarded by World Peace Prize Awarding Council for maintaining national stability, promoting economic growth and organizing a symbolic peace conference in African region. Alright viewers, we've come to the end of today's episode on Nebo TV. Hope to see you next time, same channel, Nebo TV. Subscribe. God bless you, God bless Nigeria.